The Morning Mix. Welcome to our Morning Mix podcast. We had some spooky conversations this morning, including what happened when you found something weird in your food. Yeah, you know that you know, like cute little table that's supposed to help you yeah. know, the cheese not get yeah, squished? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. replaced by a long, beautiful gray hair. Yeah, strong hair, though. Really great, <laughs> strong hair. And not only are you finding things in your food, but there are spiders attacking us everywhere. Including the spider, that, like you kill the spider, and yeah. then more spiders come out of that spider. Yeah, yeah, it's whack a mole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On a boat. Yeah, have fun, Chris. It's <laughs> your it's your dream come true. I'm living in hell. That and much more right now on the Morning Mix podcast. I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, y'all have been way more productive this weekend than one would have expected. Congratulations, yes. way to go. A new survey was revealed that two and three people say. If I do one thing over the weekend, I call it a productive weekend. That's all it takes. One thing gets accomplished. It's productive. That one thing could be meal prepping. It could be just hanging out with someone you love, running an errand, or just getting enough sleep. Ah, boy, got enough sleep Saturday. Great. Good to go. So what was the one productive thing that you did this weekend? 773, I dropped off all my Amazon returns. Oh, that's a good feeling. Makes you feel accomplished. All that clutter gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 815, I did a bunch of day drinking. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's about balance. Life's yeah. about balance, you know. It's kind of nice. I cleaned the damn kitchen. It's kind of nice. Wow, real show off here. 708 did a 20-mile bike ride with a girlfriend. Dang. What a show off. Mm-hmm. Jeez. I did most of our travel laundry because we came home from Salem. Ooh. Nice. Hope you didn't bring home any ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Bears lose and drank a beer. 630. What an accomplishment. Productive. <laughs> 847, I raked all the leaves to the curb. They're going to get sucked up today. That's nice. Okay. Let's see. I went to Costco yesterday, and it was nuts. No. Surviving a Sunday Costco yeah. run is an accomplishment oh, enough. Holy moly. It's crazy. Let's see here. Fixed the dryer, and I cleaned out my wife's car. Oh. That's a lot. Nice. That's too much. You're showing off. Hey, we had our furnace checked. Annual check done. Oh. Good to go for winter. Good to know. Smart. Yeah, that's good to do. Yeah, I need to do that. Finally closed the swimming pool. 615. Yeah. Wow. Right. We might have a nice day tomorrow, though. Just yeah. too right. soon. You could, I, go. you could skate on it. <laughs> 630 dug up Delilah's, so she'll be ready to go for Christmas music. That's great. They dug her up. She's oh, wow. Be... Oh, what, man. too soon? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Probably. She thinks so. 708, I baked cookies for my colleagues. Are wow. we? Here? Do you work here? I like cookies. Mm-hmm. No? I pulled out my vegetable garden. Finally. Finally, the vegetable garden been pulled out. Yeah, you're going to have dry yeah. You're going to have uh, vegetable icicles pretty soon. Productive weekend, absolutely. I bought and replaced two toilet seats. Two. That's huge. That's a lot. I hope you didn't get those soft ones, the, the foamy foam. ones. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, those need to come back. Come on. I helped my grandson with his history project. We made a salt dough relief map of ancient Egypt with a resin Nile River. Whoa. That's too much. That's a lot. That's too yeah. much. I don't even know what most of those words mean. <laughs> I don't even think of that idea. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. There That's it is. true. I finally waxed my car for winter. There good, you go. Good. Car waxed. Are you supposed to do that? Is that a thing? Like, is no, it, does that help it, your car? I think it's supposed to protect from like the salt, salt but right? it's yeah. not. Mm. Uh, wax on, wax off. Hardwired a blink floodlight that was collecting dust. Wow. Okay. That's a real task that you accomplished. It really does sound that. I cleaned out the th- fridge and I threw out all the expired food. Now that's that makes you feel nice. You look at that fridge, like, look at all the space we have in here. Let's mm-hmm. go with you to the store. We should load this thing up. Been procrastinating on starting a side business from home and I started it this weekend and created the Instagram page for it. Let's go. Wow. Oh, indeed. Trim my toenails. Ooh. Watch out. I finally wrote down the minutes from our association board meeting. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. I cleaned my three-year-old's room just so that they could destroy it again in 20 minutes. It's always nice. Oh, accomplishment. Turned off the Bears game at halftime. <laughs> you gave yourself back a gift of an hour and a half. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of nice, yeah. I took a baby care class because our baby, our first baby, is coming in December. Oh, yeah. That's oh. a great class. That whole first uh, couple of weeks is fun when they're pooping that weird, like, sludge stuff. Maconium? Maconium? Uh, that is what it's called. Ma- yeah, Maconium or something. Marconi Awards? Something yeah, like that. That's what it is. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> Very similar. It's yeah. like an old, like, uh, corn syrupy grossness. Kind of fun. Yeah. It's like I if went you or- work at Jiffy Lube, I yes. imagine oh, you see a lot. Oh, my God, guys. Comes right out. A lot of that wow. kind of thing. I winterized all the windows and doors in my house. It's kind of nice. And finally, what did you do 
that was so productive this weekend, my husband winterized the yard. <laughs> I was productive. He winterized the yard. And there you go. From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. First day on the job is a nerve-wracking experience, no matter what. No matter how long you've been in your chosen profession, you're starting a new job. It's all new people. There's new rules. There's new standards. There's new emails. They use Slack. They don't use Teams. There's a mail room. They don't have mail. You're not allowed to eat in the office. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's your first day. A woman started a new job in London. Her name is Lola. Lola, she was a showgirl. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she went to the bathroom, <laughs> and they were like, where's Lola? 30 minutes had gone by. I couldn't find Lola. She got trapped in the stall, and her new coworkers had to kick it down. That's a rough first day. Very. We got a couple of texts here. On my first day, I got food poisoning and vomited everywhere. Oh, man. That was my first day, my first time on the radio. You vomited? Yes. On I had, the microphone? I had, no, I had oh. literally, like, the stomach flu or whatever. Mm. Every hour on the hour oh, I was throwing up. Ooh. But I didn't want to not show up, so I didn't tell anybody. Ooh. And I kept throwing up in the garbage in my studio. Whoa. That's a lot. And I was by myself, though, so it was okay. Right, so it was okay. So it was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little better. Says the person who went in after that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what no, I cleaned here. up. I cleaned up. Yeah. Do we have to do it on yeah. the 8th? This is pretty horrible. Uh, 815 texted, my first day on the job, I was out walking my dog. Dog got skunked. I thought I was fine. Got into the elevator at work. I was not fine. No. Was immediately sent home. The person who smells. Hi, Kaylee. Good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing really well. Now, Kaylee, where were you working? Yeah, so I was working at Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, awesome. And what happened on your first day? On my first day, I was asked to go back to grab some celery, and I got stuck in the walk-in freezer for about an hour. Oh, Oh, my goodness. That's the worst fear. (laughs) So you're just rocking the black slacks and the black polo, and you get in there, (laughs) and the door clicks, and you're stuck. Yep, yeah. I did not get let out until I tried calling the front desk, and no one was answering. Um, So I didn't get let out until someone else had to come in and grab ranch. (laughs) And they found me standing there. (laughs) That is unbelievable. So, like, did, did you get cold? Like, were you okay? Oh, I was freezing cold, but... Luckily, it was in the middle of summer, too, so it wasn't, like, winter time because I think that would make it infinitely worse. Mm-hmm. But, no, I was freezing cold by the time I came out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And could they hear you? Were you banging on the door? Because if you've seen the bear, it, it happens in the bear. I don't want to give much yeah. away. But there's a moment in the bear where someone gets stuck in the freezer, and they can talk to them back and forth. So nobody had even come by for you to bang on the door. I was banging on the door, and I found out later from the manager that I guess the freezer soundproof, which I had no idea that was even wow. even existed. Mm. So yeah, they they couldn't hear me at all, no matter how much I yelled or called for help or anything. So there's no <laughs> way to open the door from the inside then, because I would think at this point in time here yeah. in 2023 that sort of like you know if you get locked in a trunk nowadays, I think there's a latch. There's a release Not like game. in the old yeah. days of Goodfellas, right? You got to bang until they right. come back and finish you off. But I feel like there should be an open, just in case this kind of right. thing might happen. Yeah, you you would think, yeah. They ended wow. up putting a doorstop by the freezer just in case that happened again. But, yeah, I think I was the only person that ever happened to. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, Kaylee. I don't, I'm don't. i just curious. Do you think it was first day hazing at all? Was there any, do you have any thought that they did it to you on purpose? You know, I guess it's possible i at the time i was in high school and i worked with a bunch of high school boys so i mean it is possible but i don't know an hour is <laughs> a long really time an hour is a long time for a yeah, job like, i did not even notice she was gone if they right. were supposed like, to be training right. her and she's nowhere if it was like 10 minutes i would say <laughs> maybe see, yeah, that but, was a joke right, but, but a yeah hour. an hour that's uh, yeah. and kaylee last question how long did you stay at the job after that um i stayed there for a couple months after that actually. really Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Well, she had to let the frostbite thaw off. Mm-hmm. And every day I mean? she thanked her ranch. Yeah, she's like, the ranch that it. saved her life. You no know? more celery. Mm-hmm. No more celery. We got more coming in. So getting stuck in the freezer on day one at Buffalo Wild Wings. You think that in there everybody likes it hot, but no, they don't. Hi, Lori. Good morning. Good morning. You're a flight attendant. What, what happened on the first day? Uh, first three months, I threw up on every landing. <laughs> Oh, Every oh, landing, no. you would vomit to the point that your coworkers, <laughs> did they know about it? They were like, all right, clear the way for Lori. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I grabbed my bag. Every single landing, sat there with my bag, threw up. 
Now, had you but, flown before? Like, what led you to yeah. flight attendant if you knew you'd get airsick? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I've been flying now for 34 years. I'm okay now. Okay. But uh, this was, yeah, 1989 when I started flying. Man, I've never year. been on an airplane. Yeah, before I even, uh, I've never been on a plane before I. Uh, there you go. Now. now you're used so, to it. Uh, yeah, my body wasn't used to it. But then after three months, and I was fine, but it was funny. I would just grab my bag, sit there, passengers would be looking at me, and I'd be throwing up. Yeah, yeah everything's fine, guys. Try, it's normal. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Try the fish. Thank yeah. you. You're listening to the Morning Mix podcast. Oh, what's in my food? Is this a rubber glove? Oh, no. oh, God. A man in Toronto found a rubber glove in his pizza. It's not bad enough that he was eating pizza in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. He had to also find a rubber glove in it. I once found a piece of metal in a Coke from mm. uh, McDonald's. Nikki, we got an 815 text that they found a crumpled up piece of paper receipt in their Bloody Mary. Oh, wow. Well, well, you know, they're really doctoring those bloodies up yeah. nowadays. You know, you get all sorts of stuff yeah. in there. Cheese, pepperoni, paper. Yeah, what can you do? Tony, how are you this morning? Good, good. How are you? We're doing really well. Now, you weren't eating pizza in Toronto. Were you having pizza locally? I was having local pizza, and uh, we opened it up, and where that cute little table should be that holds up the box, instead there was a long gray hair just hanging out the middle. <gasps> oh, I hate hair. For years, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for years, we looked, I looked for hair on my pizza. Oh, man. Yeah. The old long gray hair <laughs> on there. Uh, that's how you know it's homemade. It's right. So this isn't just, come on. Extra spice. Yeah, this wasn't frozen first. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Liz. Hi. This frightens me to no end, Liz. What'd you find in your taco? A cockroach. Oh, oh that's it. Shut up. Yeah, it was on the very last bite. Oh, it's so no. Bad. Yeah, you, you don't know. You had taken down his whole oh, family before you got there. It was a three taco dinner meal. Oh. So I had eaten everything, and it was the very last bite that I discovered it. No. So. La cucaracha, yeah. la cucaracha. Oh, yeah, tacos, right from my time. <laughs> so, did you yeah, tell this? It was our this, favorite place to eat, too. It was, keyword. <laughs> the story <laughs> just gets yeah. worse and worse yeah. every day. It happened to anybody. No, no, there's, there's a roach. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, how, did you, had you ingested a part of the roach? Had you realized that you bit half of it off? No. I it right before I took the bite. Oh, man. Mm. It was, was dead, right? Of, it was dead, yeah. It was cooked. Okay. It, it was, was cooked. Yeah. You're supposed oh. to be in there. How, how carefully did you read the menu? Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. did you? That's did like it, the hip and cool people. Know. They like to eat bugs now. It's good for you. It might have been a talk roach. You don't know there what was on go. there. God. Oh, oh yeah, poor Liz. So I, was, I was sitting with a bunch of uh, coworkers, and I think a couple of them were sent to the bathroom. Yeah, so I would. Yep. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's a, uh, yeah. Hey, hold oh, on. You get uh, what, Oh, my God. No, it's going to happen. Oh, it's a roach in her taco. Poor Liz found a cockroach in her taco. Hey, Elka, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? Not too bad. I would not want this on my sandwich. What'd you find on your sandwich? A used band aid. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, it's a band aid. Oh, God. It's a band uh, Was it just like a regular brown one, or was it like a Sesame Street band aid? <laughs> No, it was a regular latex one. It was yeah. I was thirteen. It was our class trip in DC, and they took us to a restaurant. Yeah. And there was a band aid. Oh, see, they had to make even sandwiches political out there. Jeez, band aid in the sandwich. Poor Elka. <laughs> I mean, you don't enjoy seeing a band aid anywhere. A no. used no. one, no. let alone it's your the worst. food. No. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. This is pretty intense. What'd you Are find you- in your hamburger, Elizabeth? I opened up the lid, probably to take something off I didn't like because I was a teenager, and uh, found a small metal screw. Boom. Oh, my Metal God. screw in there. Okay. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't on the and, menu. Oh, I showed the... Yeah, no, I didn't expect it at all. And I showed them, and they said it was probably from the bun warmer. <laughs> Oh, sure. Cool. Makes it better. This sure. happens all the time. Yeah, what can we do? <laughs> Our bad. No sweat. Anyway, here's an extra side of aioli. Thanks for coming. What? We just got a text from a 6 3 You guys are ruining my breakfast. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like yeah. this one right. bit. No, you don't? No. Okay, no. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. well, we got a few more. Oh, Hi, God. Dave. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Dave, you were living the high life, my man, having lobster. That's great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Until? And I ended up finding a rubber band in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It comes with them, though. That's right, standard. Right. Yeah, oh, no, the rubber band. 
Oh, the rubber band. Oh, no. <laughs> it's how they keep their pinchers closed. Yeah, they were just wanting to make I sure that the so. pincher didn't open up inside of your gut. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? And now finally, Tom. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Onions. Wow, listen to the pipes on Tom. Wow. <laughs> Tom ordered the <laughs> onion strings. And what happened? So my wife and I were just having dinner. We don't usually do appetizers, but we had some onion strings and um, pulling that out. And I had one of those nice uh, swirly metal pieces that you would scrub like an industrial scrubber oh. in the onion strings. Oh. I didn't take a bite out of it, but I picked them up and said, that doesn't look right. And uh, yeah, proceeded to call the wage service. She goes, oh, sorry about that. We'll get you another basket. Just walked away as if there was nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like that in the kitchen. They're like, if there's a problem. Time. Just ignore it. Just act like everything's yeah. fine and give them the same thing again. Hey, guys, yeah. we can't find the sponge. <laughs> You're listening to the Morning Mix Podcast. 312-233-1019. What was your spooky spider encounter? Because there's a woman in Taiwan who had a spider living in her ear for a few days in her ear hole. Oh, a spider. It. Oh, Lord. The only way that would get worse is if it was her butt. That's yeah. it. Because then all day you're like, oh, man, what is going on down here? I don't here? think you feel it in your uh, butt. You think it's a bigger canal? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's not <laughs> analyze too much. Hi, Jessica. You oh have a spider God, living please. in your butt. Thank you for calling, <laughs> <It's Jessica>. crazy. <laughs> no, no. Jessica, it wasn't on your butt, but it was on your porch, unless that's a euphemism for your oh butt. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Years ago, I had a bunch of ore weavers living on my front porch. I tried to be a good person, let them live their life, but the, the webs were getting a little big. And then one day, I out of the corner of my eye, I noticed my male person kind of struggling on my porch and i realized she was actually caught in one of the web strings <laughs> and she was getting it off of her and she of course got away but it didn't even break the web whoa it was so strong, strong. so that's when the bathroom cleaner came out and they were all gone and i have they haven't been back <laughs> now at the beginning of this conversation did you call them ore weavers what'd you call them yeah they're they're those really Big ones that oh. they're, they're actually kind of pretty scary. Um, but yeah, that's what they're called. They're called orb weavers. Orb weavers. Orb. Orb, orb, orb weavers. Yeah, orb, 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 orb weavers. Orb. Yeah. Okay, so Look Jessica's got orbs nightmare. and they're on her porch yes. and it sounds like nightmare fuel. Almost it looks like almost. a deadly yeah. uh, spider. It's got like spots on it and really big furry legs. Well, they say yeah. the prettier, the more dangerous because <laughs> they're attracting their prey. Almost took the mailman down, Why? guys. Uh, yeah. Hi, Eileen. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Love the show, guys. Oh, boy. Well, I, we love you right back, but I would not want to be where you were with a spider. Where were you? No. I was on a houseboat trip uh, in uh, Tennessee, and anyway, to make a long story short, middle of the night, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I go to the bathroom. It's completely dark. I go into the bathroom. I turn on the light. There's a huge spider in the sink. I mean, a huge spider. <sighs> So I grabbed this, you know, like a flip flop, and I went to smash the spider, and a bunch of baby spiders came out of it, no! and it was crawling all over. I'd be swimming to shore. To smash, Jump, everybody off the boat. All the spiders. I'm trying to smash all the spiders, and they're all crawling all over. And the mother spider was so big, I could not get her to go down the drain. <laughs> so, so it's it like was, whack a mole. Yeah, that's all it was. Yep. No. <laughs> no. Eileen, that's hell. You just described hell. You were in hell. You're on a houseboat. You're on the water. You're being attacked by a billion spiders that are crawling out of the mother's ass. This is terrifying. Terrifying. Wow. You want the willies? We got them. Hi, Willie. Good morning. I mean, love your show, number one. Love your show. Oh, thanks, Willie. Right back at you. We love you. Now, uh, what happens every time you go to barbecue? Hey, this is a true story. It's a black spider. He comes down. He looks at the yard. It scares the hell out of my friend. <laughs> and he goes right back up. And they say, this, I mean, this has happened. I've lived there five years. And so they said, that's your pet, Wills. Why you don't kill this damn spider? I said, he doesn't bother me. He said, he's going to come down and look around. He's going to go back up. I don't know what to I'm not, I'm not. I'm scared of spiders. I'm not bothering. I can stay up there. I don't care. Yeah. Every time I barbecue, the spider comes out. Seriously. Every time. <laughs> every he's time. just interested in what you're cooking. He wants to know what's on the menu today, Willie. Hey, man. Right. What are you serving? He'll come down. He'll come down and look. It's like, look at the spider, man. It's, that's a big spider. I'm like, I'm not messing with that spider. I'm not calling nobody out. Leave him there. He's not bothering nobody. going to go back up. As soon as he look around, he go back up, and you'll send him next barbecue. I so think he's, what it is. he's probably <laughs> smarter than we think because bet, if you yeah. think about it, like other bugs are probably attracted to the food smell, and this yeah, guy's yeah. like, hey, man, I'm going to get a huge meal out of yeah. these bugs that come by. You know what? 
I'm gonna try to videotape this fight the next time I say I'm gonna try to video because I'm gonna try to videotape. I'm scared of spiders also, but I'm gonna try to videotape this dude. It's gotta be the same spider. For it's gotta be. Yeah, I gotta see this. <laughs> now, did you, did you name him? Have you named him? I know, not yet. Not yet. A friend of mine was going wild. He's so scared of. Him. He's like, "You come, your pet. Your pet is coming down. Here he comes." I'm like, "Hey, leave him alone. Leave him alone." He likes Bart. We should call him like Sweet Baby Barbecue. Sweet Baby, Sweet Sweet baby, baby Spider. Sweet Baby Spider. Sweet Baby Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Baby yeah. Spider. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Willie has little <laughs> Willie that comes down to scope out the barbecue before every barbecue. I like that one. And now we're going to go down here to Megan. Hi, Megan. Good morning. Hi. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe. Oh, my gosh. Hi. I love you guys. Hi. Oh, hi. We love you right back. I don't love your garage, though. I don't either. And I do not love spiders. I am so terrified of them. Just like you. If they come in my house, they're dead. They're gone. You cannot come into my family's house. And I'm putting my child in the car seat to get ready to leave for school uh, about two weeks ago. And I have the sliding door open, trying to buckle her in. She's in a, a, one of those five-strap ones. And there, I went over to the other side to put my bag in while she's supposed to be getting ready. And I come back, and there is a spider. I am not exaggerating the size of my hand on the side of the wall of the garage. And instead of, like, going to protect my child, I'm just, like, calling for my husband because I'm like, I'm not going over there again. <laughs> and the so door's was- wide open. She's just in the car. And it's on her side of the garage? It's on her side of the garage, yes. on the wall. We both walked past it and didn't see it the first time. And it's like knee level. I have not been back inside the garage since. I'm literally sitting outside of it right now. Yeah. I will not put the car back in there. I'm you like, crazy? I'm terrified because mm-hmm. it's huge. Her kid's been in there for two weeks, too. Seriously? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One of them's going to come out. One of them's going to walk out. <laughs> You're on your own. Yeah. Could Sorry. you imagine like two weeks go by? Her kid comes out looking like John McClane from Die Hard. Yes. All the spider. <laughs> I did it, Mom. (laughs) Fruit snacks, please. From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. Your mix top six spooky comedy movies, according to experts. In at number six, 1990 Funz, 91. The Addams Family. Mm. That was with Angelica Houston, Raul Julia, Christopher Lloyd plays Uncle Fester in there. Christina Ritchie, of course, is Wednesday. That's in at number six, The Adams Family. A con artist plans to fleece an eccentric family using an accomplice who claims to be their long-lost uncle. Is he really their long-lost uncle? That's also, the Adams Family plot? That's the plot of that movie, yeah. It also birthed the sequel, Adams Family Values. Yeah, I saw some Adams Family a few years ago. I don't even remember which one. But There's an had, animated one. A, yeah, maybe that was the one. Yeah, that one's pretty good, too. And this one's quite a few. Joan Cusack, I think, right? I think Joan Cusack's like in the, there as like the... Yeah, uh, she's one of the instigator, if that's you will. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's with like DCFS or something in there, and she comes in to save the kids. I don't know. Okay. In a number five out of 2020, Amy and I saw this one. I don't know if you guys have seen this one. Freaky with Vince Vaughn. Mm-mm. Okay, so it's the thing where uh, he and a teenage girl switch bodies. Oh, like oh, Freaky Friday. Yeah. Right, but he is a serial killer. So now the teenage girl is a serial oh. killer in the high school. It's a comedy? It's a comedy. It's kind of goofy. It's like Easy A, Freaky Friday, plus like a murder thing. In at number four, Shaun of the Dead. Mm. Oh, so good. For the next spot on the ranking, we go across the pond to Shaun of the Dead when it comes to saving the world from hungry zombies. The last people you'd expect to be your heroes is a trio of misfits hanging out at the pub, but they take on the grueling creatures one at a time, making for a big hilarious battle. And like birthed queens, don't stop, yeah. not, don't stop me now. Oh, I mean, yeah. like people didn't really know right? that song until that movie. That's and right. Queen will be at the United Center tonight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my buddy and I are going. I'm pumped. Oh, Can't wait. Wow. Queen okay. with Adam Lambert tonight, United Center. In at number three, top spooky comedies of all time. Ghostbusters mm. out of yeah. 1984. Who are you going to call? The Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Recently, uh, Whip revealed the feeling that you felt like it doesn't really hold up. It doesn't. Have you seen it lately? I don't know. I can't explain it. It feels like it moves slowly, looks kind of old, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't it work for you. Having a bad day. I don't know. Yeah, well. And at number two, top six spooky comedies. Scary movie. Mm-hmm. The parody, of course, of all of the Scream and all of the I Know What You Did Last Summers and all that of the 90s. Second spot on the list. Did anybody think that they'd make a list of the funniest horror movies ever and not include this one? A group of teenagers accidentally kill a guy. And then a year later, they're paying the price in this parody of the most famous pop culture horror films of the late 90s. So, yeah. They got up to like five or something, didn't they? I feel like scary movies. I think, they I do think a they're bunch? still making one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably. <laughs> 
And what do we believe to be the number one horror comedy of all time, Nikki? Oh, man. Uh, only because it's weird and it's not all if it's a comedy. I'm going to go back with my Rocky Horror there. Rocky Horror know, Picture Show. Okay, yeah. that would qualify, I think, kind of comedic-ish, right? Sure. Whip, what do you like? Uh, I don't know. Is Beetlejuice a comedy? Oh, that would count, I, I think, think right? Is. V? Um, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of you is exactly right. You want to guess who? No, I'm just kidding. Congratulations <laughs> to Whip. Yes. Oh, it is Beetlejuice in a number one. A must watch for the holiday season. A Tim Burton classic, arguably one of the best funny, scary films of all time. Michael Keaton's character starts talking and you're going to understand why. Now, it's worth noting they are making another one right now. Or they're supposed to be, but they're all on strike. So delays abound, but they were working on it. A new Beetlejuice. So there you have it. You're getting ready for spooky season. Those are some of the lighter fare that you could enjoy and get a little bit scared, but not totally lose your wits entirely. Uh, testing one, two, one, two. Sound check. Sound check. This is Nikki's sound check on the morning mix. You want to start with Taylor? <laughs> Let's just start with Taylor because we yeah, always know. Fine. Okay, that's so fine. she she broke her own record, which no one's surprised about, right? So she broke her own record streaming 1989, which she had currently <laughs> had with Midnight. So she Got just it. keeps re-releasing Breaking your own records yeah. and streaming, and uh, that's it. And then just winning games for KC. That's it's kind of, of funny it. to think if you could just keep re-releasing your own thing and setting new records, you just keep doing right. it. It's like the Guinness record holder who's like, I'll do it again. And then they do it. And I'll do it again. And then they do it yeah. again. Yeah. She's like on her Peloton just constantly getting her personal best. You know yeah. what I mean? Just all the time. Unbelievable. Uh, Kelly Clark- Clarkson is adding a couple dates to her Vegas residency. So if you oh. didn't get out there and see, you have a chance. Pretty cool. December 30th and 31st. And then she's going to do one over Super Bowl weekend. How smart is that? So Brilliant. The yeah, February yeah, yeah. 9th and 10th, if you know all those people going out there and people are like, well, what the hell are we going to do the next couple of days? Here you go. Here's an option. So you can go see Kelly Clarkson. Very smart. She's also going to be hosting the Rockefeller tree lighting. Right. Yeah, right. So yeah that's coming up as well. Festive. Yep. And, and then uh, Rihanna, we reported a couple weeks ago that she was supposed to have this like two albums worth of new music, a whole world tour. She did this thing with Live Nation. Um, they're saying, no, that's not true at all. So oh. there is some stuff. Yes, she has recorded. But as far as like this world tour plan yeah. and this like double release, mm-hmm. everyone pumped the brakes on that. Um, she's actually just a fake story. Like, yeah, well, yeah. just because you kind of work, I think something out with Live Nation oh. doesn't necessarily mean they planned a world tour, you yeah. know, mm. but they're saying the, the the quote are bogus. The reports are bogus oh, is what man. they are saying. So I'm sure there will be something. It just probably hasn't been, you know, uh, inked up right. officially, like signed. I heard she's going to record Taylor's 1989. She should. As I Rihanna. Think, just break. Just put it she out. couldn't break Taylor's record. Why not? Come on. They'd be interested. Fine. Uh, and then over the weekend, we talked about it. Uh, uh, Nate Bergazzi. So I've heard Bergazzi and Bergatz. Yeah, and he both? does a bit where he's like, people say it both ways. I don't know. Okay, so he hosted Saturday Night Live. Uh, Foo Fighters were the musical guests. Great performance with her, uh, H-E-R, the yes. artist Her, joined uh, the Foo Fighters for the second song. And it was it was a beautiful, emotional song. That was really great. Uh, but Dave Grohl, known for being funny and likes to partake in skits. They had one skit where it was called Lake Beach. I don't know if you guys saw this. It was funny. It was great. Pretty funny, yep. It was about like where you go when you're not seaside. You go to the Lake Beach. Lake Beach. Uh, and Dave Grohl has some rules about cornhole he sings about for Lake Beach. He's there as like the guy who takes the, the cornhole. Hole, playing a little seriously. too seriously uh, on the Lake Beach, but always good when uh, Foo Fighters show up on anything. And Christopher Walken That's showed right. up Foo Fighters. to correct him. It was so weird. I Foo almost Fighters. called this Friday. I was like, I have a weird feeling because yeah. they kept posting yeah. all the old clips of yep. Walken doing it. And I'm like, I bet you he's going to show up. And this has kind of been their thing, right? They right. did it with uh, Taylor Swift. She introduced the musical act, and then Lady Gaga oh, just showed like up nice... and introduced. So it's like these mm. people are just doing, if you're in New York and you know Lauren Michaels and you've been on the show, just yeah. come on in and introduce the musical acts. Why that not? was pretty fun. The Morning Mix Flash Briefing with Violetta. So, cup o noodles now <laughs> going to be able to be... <laughs> What a transition. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be able to be microwavable. You're kidding. I know. It wasn't. To, to which, <laughs> to just, which the entire thought. internet is saying, wait a <laughs> second. <laughs> uh, whoops. I've been microwaving those bad boys since the beginning of time. Exactly. Yeah. We not just healthy solved for the you. runs. That's yeah. why everybody had them. Now we know what to not do. It has not been the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to boil water, pour the water over, and leave it covered. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no. now they're going to be in uh, new paper uh, containers instead of the styrofoam that we're used to. Good. And no, I went through like six microwaves and thing kept exploding on me. I didn't <laughs> yeah, know what the why. Hell? I'm like, it must be doing, the microwave must be broken. <laughs> hey, you and everybody else on yeah. the planet, newsflash today. So that's some important information for you. Next up, Kim Kardashian posted a new ad modeling her new skims ultimate push-up bra that comes complete with a built-in faux nip set. So oh, it's going nice. to look like oh, the like bad you... boys are cold. It's always there. It's always oh, there. wow, okay. So normally people put on a bra to cover that up. <laughs> or you put a Band-Aid on those bad boys to try Not to if you're a Kardashian, <laughs> you don't. Nope. No, so that kind of took the internet by storm. And then um, there was a clip that was found from Sex in the City, and I said, hey, Samantha Jones invented this years ago. Don't call him. Don't email. Just show up at his furniture store wearing these. Ew, what are those? Fake nipples. Really? Is there a nipple council? Are nipples getting a bad rap? Nipples are huge right now. Open any magazine. It's not that cold. Those girls are either tweaking or they're wearing these. (laughs) All the rage right now. All the rage. Apparently it is. I can't believe you didn't know. (laughs) I know. And I, it should be noted that um, in the ad, she talks about climate change. She's like, it's getting hotter and hotter out there. But yeah. no matter what, your headlights are going to stay nice and strong. A lot of this money is also being donated to climate control efforts. She mm. also released uh, skims for men. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the skims, good. no nipples on there, but you do get coin purse. Uh, she said that they sold 25,000 orders within five minutes of launching. The guys are really cute. Yeah. <laughs> in them. The whip. We don't have to lose weight. We just have to wear this. Okay, I'm not even sure how that would operate, but I, yeah. I think They're it's underpants. just oh, yeah, underpants. Yeah, built-in yeah. turkey neck. Yeah, says. men's spanks, essentially. No okay. Yeah. Okay. If you want it. And lastly, the internet has been discussing pretty adamantly. There's a list of places where not to take a first date. So oh. that is out. And um, I'll just give you the top three to start. So in a number three, Chili's. <laughs> in a number two, Applebee's. Okay. In a number one, the Cheesecake Factory. What? I know. I personally think that's a wonderful option. And so does the rest of the internet. They're like, this is where you can give your date a lot of options. That's why it's a good idea. The list does li- have a lot of like fast food chains. So that's what the discussion okay. is turned to online. Is it acceptable on a first date to take someone to a fast food chain? Well, that's interesting. I say yes. Yeah. Who the heck cares? So. I kept seeing your place showing up on that. Well, like, just your house. So there's yeah, other yeah, things yeah. on the list. So your house, movies, Olive Garden, Chipotle, and any fast food chain rounding out the top yeah. ten. What's left? Yeah, movies and your house are yeah. not good? Well, first date? I would have never had house. a date in my life yeah. if it weren't for those places you just named. <laughs> Pretty much. I feel like that's most people. Right. Yeah. You this had was a also for your this, first date. This was also put out by a Kardashian, wasn't oh, it? Stop yes. it. Take them to Nobu only. <laughs> exactly. wow. That's your flash briefing. All right. Thank you for joining us for the Morning Mix podcast. Make sure you rate, review, like, and follow this podcast. You can also follow us on social at 1019 Mix Chicago. And we will see you tomorrow on the Morning Mix.